Hello everyone, I'm Motive Games, and this is the official start to our new video series, Build for a Week. The whole idea is we start with a build guide around the start of a build's lifespan, and after a full week of play and improvement on the build, we'll post a second updated guide showing how far we were able to progress, what changed, and what we've learned through playing it. Today's build was actually voted on by my community, and is Melee Cold Gathering Storm Shaman. Alright, now before we start, let's go over required items real fast. The only thing you'll really need is the Shattered Lance set, being one of these swords, and the Relic. Two swords is nice. And it shouldn't be too hard to get this as it is a very common boss drop that can be gotten from the stolen lance. It's a 50% chance for the swords and the relic. So after clearing it two to three times, you should have more than enough to start this. The next thing is going to be an spined ornate herald idol. The top line is the only thing we care about being the chance on hit to summon a thorn totem and we'll make it so you do not have to play with thorn totem on your bar. This will speed up monolith clearing drastically and will give you a chance to actually have really good uptime on your thorn totem passives without having to drop 50 mana every time you want to do it. Now with that out of the way, let's get started on the skills. We are actually going to be using last epoch tools for this and a big reasoning is it will allow me to kind of reset these and fill them out in front of you. So this is the overall layout. Let's get ready with the recording. We're going to start with one point into Jilting Strikes and one point into Frostbringer. The main point of this was just to convert it over to cold. We are not going to be building around the Storm, Pro Storm Bolts nor the Frostbite Chance as those would be entirely separate builds and I want to try to stay on theme as possible for this one. From there we're going to put one point into Looming Clouds, one point into Concentrated Storm, two points into Eye of the Storm, and one point into Rending Vortex. This crit chance per Maelstrom is going to be very important for making this build work as crit chance is basically going to be the main way we will look, look to scale our damage into the in-game. After that, I want to put one point into Wind Fury Blows, four points into Thunderous Strikes so we can get that juicy 40% pin, and one point into Mana into Storm so we have some form of mana generation as we will be dumping our mana in certain ways. Now with this, it's just going to be rounding out the rest of the tree. I like to do two extra points in Concentrated Storm, two extra points into Wind Fury Blows to max that out, and then three extra points into Jolting Strikes. And if you have any extra points for whatever reason, you can fill out the last one in Concentrated Storm and then maybe put some point in Diving Cleaver. But the most part, the rest of this isn't going to be that helpful for us as it either buffs Storm Bolts or provides some form of niche utility that we won't care about. Now, let's go ahead and start with Maelstrom. Here's the overall tree. And for progression, one point of Whirlpool, one point of Turbulence, two points of Calm, one point of Windswept, one point of Wind Fury. This is giving us the standard setup as we'll be having six or more stacks pretty much always. This way we can have constant haste and constant frenzy. After that, two points into Turmoil and three points into Beneath the Waves. The reason for this is because we're going to be hard casting Maelstrom along with casting it from a secondary source being Warcry. This is to get us as many stacks as possible because again, for every stack we have, we get 1% flat crit chance on Gathering Storm. Anything left over can there can fill out our our utility points so two points in a calm so that we're not spending as much mana three points in a whirlpool so that we have better uptime now with any leftover points from here i would say you have two options the first one is if you have only have 20 points to spend on maelstrom we can go ahead and put two points in arctic chill and then put two points in arctic blast saving one so that i can undo here if for whatever reason you have more than that it could be worth it to go ahead and put three more points into turbulence and dump your remaining points into gathering storm this way you can keep a higher maelstrom count when clearing mobs now let's move on to warcry here is the layout. And then for progression order, we're going to start with one on Juggernaut, one on Breath, and then four on Whirlpool. This way, whenever we cast Warcry, we will actually cast Maelstrom instead. After that, we're going to follow this chain down, go ahead and pick up Shallow Breath. The rest of these aren't important. The only thing you need to know is there will no longer be a stun, freeze, or fear. And instead, we have a half cooldown on this. That way, we can get as many stacks of Whirlpool as possible. With just these two clumps of nodes, we'll actually be able to keep a constant amount of eight Maelstrom. From there, one point into Berserker, two points into Brutality, three points into Fury Strike. Berserker stacks are actually going to be a very large source of our damage, and you'll see will be one of the main things we have to focus on when bossing. Essentially, every time you hit something, you gain one stack. Every stack will give you higher adaptive melee damage, which in our case will end up being cold, and higher attack speed, up to 48%. Now, one point to Deep Roar, one point to Jormans, two points into Frostclaw, and then one point to Bringer of Winter. This way, after we Warcry, we'll have an additional crit chance, just trying to push that crit on Gathering Storm as high as possible. Next up, we have Earthquake. This is going to be our main form of mana sync, and as well, just a high amount of burst damage to the build. It helps clear packs, and it's going to help us do bossing. There's going to be a big misconception here, I think, in the fact that Earthquake is primarily physical damage. However, most of the added damage that we have for melee is actually cold and not adaptive. This means that most of Earthquake damage is going to be cold damage. Because of this, it will massively benefit from our percentage increase to cold damage thanks to the Shattered Lance set. With that in mind, here's the layout. For progression, we're going to start with four points into Rupture, 
and one point the seismic smash. This will convert all aftershock damage into initial hit damage, which will allow us to take nodes like Crushing Wake, which we'll put three points into. From there, two in Lethargy, one into Outbreak, and then three into Shattered Quake. This is going to give us damage against chilled or frozen enemies, and we will have guaranteed ways to chill enemies on our melee attacks, so you, this isn't something you ever have to think about. One point into Potency, one point into Concussion, and then remaining points are going to pick up Shattered Quake, one point into Crushing Wake, and then from here you have a decision. Seismic Tide is not necessary, however, I find it to be very helpful, so I am going to go ahead and pick it up. This will put Earthquake on a 2 second cooldown, but when I cast it, it will cast 3 Earthquakes, each one consuming a little bit more mana. In a lot of cases, this can mean we'll get out less Earthquakes, which will mean less damage sometimes, but there are going to be situations against bosses where having this delayed melee hit will actually help you keep your Berserker stats. So I will put my last point here. If you decide you do not like this node, go ahead and drop it and put the last point into Crushing Wake. Now to clear up a little confusion on why the points seem so spread out in weird ways, this is because every a lot of these are multiplicative modifiers. So for instance, Potency and Crushing Wake will both apply 20% damage buff as multiplicative. It may seem it may seem like a no-brainer to instead of put this one point into potency, which will reduce our area, to instead put it into crushing wake, which doesn't. However, because we already have four points into this, however, because of the way the system works, adding in this one point of potency will increase our damage more because all of the bonuses from crushing wake are also going to be multiplied by this 20% from potency. We can actually see this in game pretty well looking at Earthquake's tooltip. Now DPS on this ability is not very accurate as we will not be using it all the time and it's basically a burst attack, but here we can see it does 50,000. I'm gonna go ahead and put a point into Crushing Wake and you can see the damage goes up to 56,000. Now, if I remove this point from Crushing Wake and I put this point into Potency instead, you can see we go up to 60,000. Having different types of multiplicative modifiers is going to be very helpful for your damage. Now with that out of the way, let's get into Thorn Totem. This is the layout. And as for progression, we're going to go ahead and put four points into Forest Expanse, four points into Eternal Forest, and one point into Grove Mine. This essentially is just going to make it so our totems last a long time, and when they're summoned, it summons all five of them at once, so we don't have to worry about it. From there, one point into Ancient Power, two points into Impale, and five points into Shred Armor. This is actually one of the ways we sneak Armor Shred into this build. We have the totems do it for us, since they're not doing anything else other than providing us passive buffs. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and put three points into Double Chance on projectiles. This way, we can just get more of this if possible. For the most part, these totems won't be doing any damage at all, so I see no reason to spec into things trying to increase their damage. We just want them to apply status effects and proc our passives. Now, back into the game, let's go over passives. We're going to start with five points into Primal Strength, one point to Harmony of Blades, and then three more points into Primal Strength, one point to Hunter's Restoration, six points into Survival of the Pack, and then four more points in Hunter's Restoration. You could make an argument for Tempest Bond, however, you're going to see later when we go over items that we will have well over a thousand percent bonus damage, and this is essentially going to be a drop in the bucket for our damage bonuses, while something like Hunter's Restoration giving us 10% more HP can be more valuable. Moving over to, over to Shaman, one point into Silent Protector, and four points into Shamanic Infusion, five points into Totemic Flurry, and then 10 points into Windbringer. We need one point in the Silent Protector to get to Totemic Fury, which will essentially give us more attack speed while our totems are out. <coughs> this will of course be a pretty large damage buff for us, and then Shamanic Infusion gives us Penetration as well as Attunement which will be a slight damage buff. 10 points in a Windbringer is going to give us a nice amount of cold damage, but also come with some dodge rating, which isn't worthless. Now from here, we're going to put 5 points into Shattered Heavens to give us a little bit more flat melee and two points in a protective circle. You may want to put a little bit more in this as 6% doesn't seem like a lot. However, one thing to note is we are summoning five totems at a time, and this, even with basically no resistances on, will bring you up to cap because we also have our, bas our passive modifier. As you can see here, now that the totems are gone, we're at 12% and 0%. So anything extra will just end up putting you over cap. And then of course, if your resistances are a little better here, especially in physical, you can pretty much just afford to only put one point in here. From there, five points into increased elemental damage, one point into Rhythm of Thunder, and then one point into Shamanic Confusion, and then two points into Shamanic Confusion. Now we're gonna put eight points into Stormblade and then basically leave the rest of this tray alone. There is an argument to make for filling out Thunderstrike. However, I don't feel like it's worth it just at this moment. Over in the Beastmaster tree, it's time to pay our attacks. We're gonna start with five points into our assigned strength, five points into Boarheart, one point to Savagery, one point to Ambush, and then three more points in Earth Sign Strength. Five points in a Porcine Constitution, five points in a Boarheart, 
and then five more points into Borgheart. This essentially gives us our defensive core that you will see in almost every shaman build, and then one point into savagery and one point into ambush gives us access to aspect of the shark. This will make it so that we get a buff every three seconds for 75% melee damage and 10% melee attack speed, which is better than four points into Thunderstrike for two points. From here, five points into Lamprey Teeth so that we can get a little bit of melee leech. This is going to keep us healthy and keep us from having to use something like Bleeding Heart. From here, one point into Rending Maw and then four points into Hunters of the Deep. This will make it so that we have almost 100% uptime with Aspect of the Sharp and then we can go ahead and fill out Rending Maw. This will give us 100% Armor Shred and yeah, it's just more damage for us, right? With our last bit of points here, you have a few options. We can put four points into Thunderstrike to get some attack speed. You could dump some points into Glacial Strike so that we can get some melee cold and then so we can get some strength and every three seconds get a flat 40 bonus damage on a melee cold attack could be a juicy crit or just fill out things for resistances like silent protector whatever you decide to do almost any of these are going to be completely fine however i'm going to go with four points and two thunder strike for the attack speed and two points in the shamanic confusion to round out the pen with this left you should have around five points and maybe that's a good <clears throat> and just go ahead and throw them in glacial strike with that done let's go ahead and talk about items now, like we said, we have the Shattered Lance set. This will give us a bunch of melee flat cold and percent increased melee cold damage. Uh, the top line saying to gain the side for 15 seconds is pretty much non-existent, but it is a 20% multiplicative damage buff, a little bit of health regen to scale with the set bonus, and the relic isn't much different. As you can see, the main concept is we're going to be stacking health regen so that we can get more melee cold. Now, that does not mean it's the only thing we should be doing but there are a lot of decent items for this. Call of the Tundra, I think, is one of the first uniques that you could pick up. It's a pretty regular drop from Herot, and if we can happen to throw HP regen on there from LP, it becomes even better. Since it has health regen in it, and of course, plus four to Warcry, since Warcry is actually one of the stats, or one of the skills we would like more points in, it just feels like a no-brainer. I currently don't have any other uniques that I found on this character that I feel like would be good to throw in here, but we have these gloves that have increased health regen and melee attack speed on them, as well as hybrid health. That feels really Really nice uh, boots with extremely high HP regen on them. Uh, we were lucky with the tier seven roll. I managed to throw some strength and physical resistance on there. The base is also pretty nice. This belt is basically just a hybrid health belt. Uh, nothing else on it that's important. The crit strike avoidance is, I guess, nice, but but this one has a lot of room for improvement. Chest piece, same thing. Exalted health regen. We managed to get twelve strength, but that's the only line on it that matters, as we basically as we don't transform. For the amulet, I've managed to throw a crit strike multi on here, as again we are building up crit chance in this build so crit strike multi is where we eventually want to move to alongside the hp region um it's nice to not forget that and then i'm using ferrobor's pers uh, persistence for the time being as it just something to give us some necrotic resistance a good chunk of armor and then some health regen for the totems the only one that's important is going to be this spined ornate that i talked about earlier you really want to find this whether you get it at four percent or ten percent not a big deal just make sure that you can get one of these for this build it's going to be super important and will keep you from having to put storm summon Thornton Totems on your bar and automate the process for you. Now in Blessings, there's only one that's really important and it's going to be Grand Rhythm of the Tide. You get this from Ending the Storm and is a massive DPS boost for this build. It's actually something that I would almost recommend you get prior to starting this build. Now, let's say you wanted to see exactly how much percentage cold damage you have. You could do the math yourself and that would take God knows how long. But instead, we can come over to here to Last Epoch Tools and import our character by first filling out our account name and then the character name. So in this case, mine is MOTF Games TTV, which you see on top of my character all the time, and the character name is MOTF Shaman. I click this, it's gonna go ahead and pull up our information here. We can slide over to offense, scroll down, and you can see I currently have 1,652% percentage cold damage and 179 flat cold damage. But you don't have to, I did this after starting the build myself to give a little idea on how the build works. As we're going through monoliths and even in boss fights, you're gonna constantly be cycling between casting Maelstrom and casting Warcry. You wanna cast Maelstrom whenever you're at three stacks, as you can see down here, and then Warcry whenever it's up. Just go ahead and throw your melee attacks. You can see down here, we've stacked up 14 stacks of Berserker, and at that point, we're free to go ahead and slam our earthquake if you happen to have the node where it'll slam for you you only have to press it once and then you can go back to casting your abilities but the main thing is keeping this berserk stack up 
Now, to help keep these berserk stacks up, there's actually some techniques you can use. The delayed earthquake with the three different hits is the first one. However, as your stacks get low, if you can't get a hit, you can actually cast a Warcry to refresh the duration. It will not refresh the amount of stacks, obviously, since it doesn't otherwise, and just allows you to get a little bit of a saving grace moment against the boss. Very simple for our extra ability, since we're not hard casting Thorn Totems, we use Fury Leap, mostly to get around the map and then reposition against bosses. From here, that's going to be it. We're going to start some gameplay, and if you liked the video or the concept behind it, leave a comment. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment. And if you don't like this video concept and you think that you would rather just see more fleshed out builds uh, further down the line, make sure to leave that as a comment as well, because that's something that I think would be pretty important before we invest too much time into a video series that people don't like to watch. Anyways, I'll be playing this build live on Twitch for the rest of the week. I'll be playing this build live on Twitch throughout the week, and you can catch me there. Peace and enjoy the gameplay.